You know, when I say shock, I'm being facetious. Americans coming back home after being abroad and having culture shock is one of the biggest misnomers in the vlogging world. Hello and welcome to our retire early lifestyle. We knew this was going to happen when we moved to a small town in the south because we've been through this before. The utter shock that a small town life brings can be contagious. Better watch out. If you don't like what I'm about to say, you better not come. Small town Southern Americans are so friendly and nice, it's not only suspicious, it's shocking. <laughs> just kidding. And actually, big city Southern folks are just as nice and friendly. Southerners stop and talk with you. They seem to have more time to just chit chat for a few minutes, even when they don't because really, they are just as busy as big city folk. They're just a bit more laid back. Small town folks actually go out of their way to help you with something, whether it's directions or finding an item in the store, even if they seem quite busy with something else. We really like that kind of customer service. It's phenomenal. And it's not just about customer service. Just today, another customer, that is to say a local southerner, which was not a store employee, went all the way to the other section of a large department store to get us a product when he overheard us saying we couldn't find it. Unbelievable. And why would he do that, I hear you asking? Because we explained we were waiting on the store employee to get us something behind the locked counter. So that's why he went to get it for us. Wow. Some folks may not like the small talk and the chit chat. If that's you, you probably won't like small town southern folks. But you certainly won't be in shock about it. Another thing I have to mention is you won't get such exceptional service when you live abroad either. I don't care where it is. First world or developing country, the customer service is pretty much null and void. Small town southern Americans have a comforting accent. It's actually calming to hear someone talk with a southern accent. And that's because most of our personal interactions with folks that have a southern drawl have mostly been very pleasant and wholesome. And is one of the things I missed a lot when we went abroad. The wonderful southern accent is just one of the many cultural familiarities you will miss if you're from the south and you live abroad. We talk a lot about this because when you move abroad, you're going to have to learn a new language to be able to interact and talk with the local people. You'll feel out of place at first because you don't know the language, and believe me, you will miss English speaking with friends and family. And while we're on the subject, you know Hollywood in their silly movies love to depict southern folks as hillbillies and ignorant and we now know that was just another way to divide the country and it worked if you're one of those people that make fun of the southern drawl you better not come here because that's the way they talk here and it's not going to go away anytime soon small town southerners call us baby sweetie and honey and it's so charming and wholesome remember when you were a kid and your mom or dad called you honey or baby then you got married and your spouse calls you that. Didn't you like that when they called you such a sweet nickname? Lorraine, honey, please come down here. Yes, mom, I'll be right there. And here we are amongst people we don't even know and they use these same endearing nicknames when addressing us. To some people, it might be encroaching in their space and they won't like being called honey or dear or baby. But some people might find it warm and comforting, like we do. Just depends on your personality. Never have we been called such endearing nicknames when living anywhere abroad. Just saying, now we're back with our compatriots and you sure can tell. But no, we're not in shock over it. The women smile and are pleasant. I'm an observer of my surroundings and I've noticed that 9 out of 10 women, no matter what the age, will smile at me and many will say hello in passing. Even though we know that many people are going through many difficulties right now financially and otherwise, and some of them are having health challenges, but most people still have the manner to be pleasant folks. This was always one of the things we loved about the South. They don't know you and we don't know them, but they say hello and start talking with you. And that is a nice aspect of life here that we enjoy that we didn't get too much of when we lived abroad. So if you're too busy to say hello or give a smile to someone or to stop and chit chat on the corner, 
Small town Southern living is probably not going to be a good fit for you. Godly, caring folks come from the South. The Southeast is described as the Bible Belt for a reason. Anyone who lives in the South will tell you that the kind-heartedness comes from the love of God, family, and country. We certainly do not want to divide people, but it's a known public fact. Look it up. In the southern regions of the USA, you're more apt to run into conservative folks with traditional family values that carry their faith with them. That's why we got here as quick as we could. <laughs> we were from the South before we left and went abroad, and now we're back in the South and enjoying being back home again. Some people might get offended by those who live by their faith in the big guy upstairs. If that's you, maybe you should rethink your strategy of where to move to or which small town to move to. There are smallish towns across the United States that would make great places to live if you're tired of the hustle bustle of big city life. Southern folks live a slower pace of life, especially in the smaller towns. I guess the best way to describe this is that Southerners are more apt to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. It's true, there's not a lot of opportunity in smaller townships in the South. People get up and go to their jobs and come back home and tend to their gardens and cook or watch some TV. Not a lot of time is wasted getting stuck in big city life traffic or getting on public transportation like the subways that crisscross the big cities that take people to and fro and to their jobs. And most small town folk don't have strenuous jobs that keep them working overtime. They simply live the slower pace of life which provides them with more time for themselves and family. Small town Southerners like living in small towns for all the reasons we've talked about so far. Small town living is certainly not for everyone, just those people who have lived here all their life and have no dream to leave because they're happy right where they are. We don't want to use any cliches here, but you know the rest of the story. Small town prices are less than big city prices, that's for sure. This fact should not shock anyone. If you're coming from abroad, you might find that to not be the case, and some folks like to call it sticker shock. Okay, well, better go get yourself on some adrenaline to deal with your shock from the prices in the USA, because prices are much higher here than abroad, but then so is the GDP much higher than most of the areas that the move abroad, live abroad crowd go to, such as Italy, Ecuador, Portugal, Philippines, Colombia, Costa Rica, yada, yada, yada. So there is no reason to come back to your home country and have culture shock about prices unless you kept yourself in a bubble from the outside world while you were away. Everyone knows prices are higher in the U.S. But the U.S. is huge and prices vary on most everything depending on where you live. You have to get creative and find ways to live without giving up your so-called standard of living. We like to call it comforts. Anyone can live a comfortable life in the USA on a small pension or social security. If you have to keep up with the Joneses that has piled up debt to their noses, well, that's a different story. That's not a real standard of living because until they own that home or car, it's not a done deal. There is no standard, if you know what I mean. Living paycheck to paycheck is not a comfortable way to live. What do you think debt is? In a nutshell, it's living hand to mouth, never really knowing if you'll have enough money to make your house payment, and that would be downright stressful. If you're not one of the millions of Americans that was affected by the latest Hurricane Helene that just wrecked havoc on many people's lives here in the South, we should be thankful we have a roof over our head. Our deepest prayers are with everyone who has been affected by the hurricane and our thoughts go out to everyone who lost a loved one during the devastating storms. Stay strong, Southern compatriots. May God be with you and keep you all safe. Take care. Bye-bye.